Murphy. On tonight's show, comedy from Simon Polaramis and Luke Benson. Appearances from Friendless. Live music from Mason Hall. And Australia's sweetheart, Toddy Goldsmith. And it looks like Ben has arrived now at the theatre. The crowds go crazy. He's forgotten his clothes. Oh, dear. Oh. Well, it's still time to, for the show to start. So once again, welcome to Live from St Kilda with the one and only, the man behind it all, Ben Murphy! so much for being here. Uh, how are we all feeling tonight? Oh, excellent, really great to hear. It cost a fortune to be here though. Fuel prices. Uh, last year I couldn't travel more than five kilometres from home thanks to Miss Rona. And this year I can't travel more than five kilometres from home as it's so expensive. Cost an absolute fortune to be here. And on top of that, I've actually not been feeling too great recently. I've had a bit of a dud stomach, a bit achy, just a tad under the weather. So naturally I consulted Dr Google to find out what was wrong with me. It turns out I've got tuberculosis and I'm six months pregnant. Yikes. Uh, well, at least the ladies of the Maya maternity section will finally stop giving me weird looks. Uh, what, you can't blame me for wearing maternity pants after COVID. We all put on a little bit, didn't we? Now, uh, so much sickness going around at the moment and so many people, rightfully so, are afraid to catch one of the many things going around. You know, I miss the good old days when you would cough to cover the passing of wind. Now with all the fear, you fart to cover a cough. He coughed, run! <laughs> Fart, cover it up, no one knows. Now, my fiance and I were recently visiting my parents in Queensland. Uh, we were there for holiday, but every day we were supposed to see my parents. He suddenly got a little bit sick, uh, which is weird. He always seemed to only fall sick the days that we were meant to see them, which is kind of strange. Oh, maybe, <laughs> I get it. Uh, he's got a funny relationship with my mum. He does really try, though. For Christmas, she asked for something for the bath, but she really hated the toaster he got her. Now, uh, onto something more important. The Oscars are coming up! Yay! That's right, the Oscars. It's just like the Logie Awards, except that it's something that actually matters. It's the real deal. Uh, though, if anyone here is uh, watching from the Logies, then I would happily accept and change my tune very, very quickly. Uh, we've got some great nominees this year, as always. For Best Picture, we have wildly loved films such as Drive My Car, West Side Story, and Licorice Pizza. Yeah, a fun fact, licorice pizza is also one of my current pregnancy cravings. Yum. Uh, another film up for best picture is King Richard. We all know the famous Williams sisters, Serena and Venus. Two powerful women who showed their worth to the tennis world. Some of the strongest players ever. And what's more, their expertise just proves to all the bigots out there that women are essential to the universe of sport. So of course, they made a movie about their dad. Okay. <laughs> Some of the best picture nominees are Power of the Dog, a Nightmare Alley, which coincidentally is what my partner calls my parents' house, and finally, Don't Look Up, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, or as he calls it, Don't Look Up My Girlfriend's Age. Uh, up for international feature film is a movie called The Worst Person in the World. Uh, this film... It <laughs> Wrong picture, guys. Uh, the worst person in the world. This is from Norway, and uh, th there you go. The worst person in the world. What a great movie. So this film is about a young woman's love life, despite being called the worst person in the world. Uh, again, that movie is the worst person in the world. <laughs> Uh, in the Corduroy Club tonight, we have an Aussie actor who gained huge fame in Wogs Out of Work, and then is one of the creators of Acropolis Now, Simon Polaramis. Do you remember that show, Acropolis Now? Yeah! Ah, uh, so good. Uh, coincidentally, today is also Greek Independence Day. It's a day when Greeks all over the world celebrate the country's rebellion from the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> no, no, that's an Ottoman couch. Uh, no, that's, that's Aussie actor Barry Otto. <laughs> Uh, the Ottoman Empire was where the Greeks all over the world celebrate the rebellion against the Ottoman Empire. Forget it. Move on. Uh, Simon is of Spanish descent, and I heard that if you meet a Spanish person, you should say mucho. It, uh, it means a lot to them. Uh, yeah, strap in, there's an hour to go. It's also International Waffle Day. This morning I made a Belgian waffle. Then in the afternoon I made a Vietnamese friend do some small talk. Life skills. Tonight, we'll be joined by one half of the amazing Melbourne duo, Mason Hall, Joe Kniep, to talk about their new song, Montreux. We'll be here on stage. 
an incredible new song. We've got more comedy from the best of the Edinburgh Fringe Fest, comedian Luke Benson, to perform here on stage as well. Yeah. I'll be swimming with dolphins in this week. We're gonna stick around for that if you want to see a beautiful, majestic, smooth-bodied creature swim with some dolphins. And our chit-chat guest, famed singer, actress, television host, Charity Queen, and a contestant on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, Tony Goldsmith! Yeah! You know, I first remember Toddy as the host of the progressive and empowering TV show, Sex Life. I was 15 and couldn't wait to be old enough to start my sexual awakening. And now I'm 30 and I can't wait for someone to let me. <laughs> One day. So all that's left to say for now is welcome to Live from Secuta with me, Ben Murphy. It's time to hit the streets with St Kilda Beats. And ironic to his name, our next artist, Friendless, has no shortage of pals, especially friends that he can create a catalogue of certified bangers and hits with. The Aussie producer, Friendless, is entering 2022 with a bang, bringing the summer vibes with the talented Australian singer-songwriter, Bianca, with their new collaborator track, Left to Right. This award-winning artist is sure to get old and new fans grooving to his new track that is filled to the brim with catchy melodies, amazing vocals, and his signature quirky touches. The result? A completely wild masterpiece. And I guess I'll be moving to my left to welcome our guests Friendless and Bianca! Hey Ben, it's Friendless here. And I'm Bianca. And then my new song, Left to Right, is out now. It's about... Well, it's a really deep song um, about... Death. Dancing! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. Oh, looking forward to it. Well, let's check out the video clip for Left to Right now. Oh, what a great song, Friendless! Thank you! Thanks for having us, Ben. Hopefully, we'll come and see you soon. Bye! <laughs> See you later, guys. Uh, after seeing that, all I want to do is dye my hair and dance. Friendless's new track, Left to Right, featuring Bianca, is out now on all major streaming platforms. Now, country music allows for listeners to feel what the artist is singing, all through soothing lyrics and catchy strings. The award-winning folk singer-songwriter, Helen Shanahan, perfectly embodies the heart of country sound. The new single, Canvas, has soft acoustic guitar that melts beautifully with Shanahan's unique voice, to create a song that will draw the listeners into a personal world. With a powerful music video to accompany the track, Shanahan's new track will be making all the great country and folk legends proud. Uh, please put your hands together and welcome the talented Helen Shanahan. Hey Ben, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm very excited my new song Canvas is released. Uh, the song's actually the title track from my upcoming album. Um, the song is a bit of a personal one. I wrote it about what we learn to accept from those we love over time and how that affects us and how what we take on is not always best for us. So um, yeah, the song is sort of a little bit uh, heart-wrenching in that way, I think. Oh, well, I think it's time for us to brace ourselves and have a bit of a look at the new Vizig video now. And I learn to be still as you should have your skin. Oh, that was absolutely beautiful, Helen. Thank you so much. Thank you, much, Thank you so much for having me, Ben, and I hope to be in the studio again soon. Cheers. Bye. Thank you so much. Uh, go and listen to Helen Shanahan's new track, Canvas, out now. You know, some people say that I have the breast of Dolly Parton and the voice of Blake Shelton. Uh, maybe we should collaborate with Helen on a new country song. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, you suckers. Uh, later on in the show, we'll be having a performance from one half of the duo Mason Hall with their excellent new track, Montreux. And it's almost six years since their last live show together, during which time the two members of the group have been exploring other musical projects. Mason Hall are finally set to reunite. Despite both moving through several different cities since the guys met and formed Mason Hall back in college in Brisbane, the band are stronger and sharper in their songwriting than ever before. And I'm thrilled to welcome one half of Mason Hall here tonight. Please put your hands together for Joe Kaneem! Hello, Joe! How are you, mate? 
from six. Woo! Oh, look at that. What, what a welcome you've had tonight. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Now, I know there's lots of uh, roadworks happening out in St Kilda at the moment. Were you uh, crossing during the spray painting? This was actually an overzealous uh, makeup artist backstage. And it just, it just dripped all over the outfit. Yeah, no, right. It's absolutely yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, Joe, it's been uh, six years since uh, you and the fellow members of Mason Hall have collaborated and, and done a live show together. Why have you kept the fans waiting so long? I love the insinuation we have a massive thronging fan base waiting for us to come <laughs> oh, back. We've got a fan base, don't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's Mum. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 100%. Um, Life gets in the way, hey. We had uh, we dove headfirst into administrative careers. Rock yep. has its charms, but we went another way. And then, uh, yeah, recently we reconnected. We reconnected in London before all the madness of the past yep. couple of years, and we decided. Oh, something happened the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just this little thing yeah, that yeah, got yeah. around. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we. we and that uh, the, the little madness that happened affected your entertainment career. It did a little. Really, you're the first entertainer I've heard <laughs> of that had some issues in the last couple I'm sure of years. That doesn't come up on this show <laughs> at all. So um, you've, you've re reformed and you've got this brand new song out called uh, Montreux. Am, am I pronouncing that correctly? pronouncing it correctly. Beautiful. And you're going to be uh, performing that for us a little bit later yeah. on in the show. Uh, and it is uh, typically performed as a duet. Uh, are you going to like split personalities and have a bit of... Are you going to do, you know, paint one half of your face and do a bit of split <laughs> stuff like that? I'm not going to attempt to drum and play guitar and sing at the same time, if that's what you're implying. <laughs> but I am going to, yeah, strip it back a bit. Oh, I'm really looking forward. Are you guys looking forward to it? Yeah! yeah. Well, that's Joe Kadeem. He's going to be on at the end of the show. Uh, until uh, we're going to go to a break, we'll be back shortly with more Live from St Kilda. <laughs> Tonight, if you too want to be part of the fun of the studio recording, go to our website www.livefromsecure.com and book your tickets, please. It's time to play some random game show. Ah, that is right. It is time to play one of my favourite parts of the show, some random game show, and it's called some random game show because we never quite know what we're going to do. So it is a bit random. But to play a game show, we need some contestants. Tony, who do we have? Ben, our first contestant is Tom from Sandringham. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> His opponent this evening is Diane from St Kilda. So put your hands together for Tom and Diane. Ah, oh, now uh, I'm assuming we've got Tom over here now. Uh, Tom, oh, no, you're probably over here. Tom from Sandringham. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. You're welcome. Now, uh, how are you feeling? Are you feeling pretty confident? Excellent, right. fantastic stuff. <laughs> and uh, over here we are joined by Diane. Diane, where were you from again? Exactly uh, right. You. Now, uh, tonight we are going to be playing some random game show. You two are going to be competing against each other to win some incredible prizes. Now, uh, which of you is more likely to win tonight? Uh, obviously me. Oh, well, obviously. Ooh, Very good. Obviously. Diana, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I'll be second runner up. Second runner up. Second so, uh, <laughs> first loser. <laughs> All right, that's a nice way. Uh, audience, who are we going for tonight? <laughs> yeah, now um, our winner is going to get some fantastic prizes. Uh, we've got some incredible prizes tonight. Tony, what are our prizes? Ben, tonight's lucky winner will receive a $50 gift card from Core G Chicken on Ackland Street. Whoa! Very but nice. But wait, there's more. Ooh. They'll also receive a $50 Amaze Ball box from the Cheesecake Band. Oh! That is excellent. Cheesecake and chicken. We've got no vegetarians or lactose intolerant people. <laughs> Good, all right, you're welcome to come to dinner any time. It's easy to look after you. All right, now we are going to have a bit of fun tonight. Uh, which prize are you most looking forward to hopefully winning? Well, look, I have a thing for CH words, so chicken cheesecake, but I think it's cheesecake for me. Cheesecake. Do you have a favourite type of cheesecake? Last week we had uh, Justin here on stage. He was teaching us how to make the delicious death by chocolate. Oh, look, I'll, uh, I'll order double, really. A death double, by chocolate. very good. <laughs> and how about you, Diane? What are you hoping to win most of all? Cheesecake. Cheesecake. It's a, a winner. The, uh, the Corgi Chicken, uh, we appreciate your sponsorship and we love you too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just not as much as cheesecake this week, sadly. <laughs> now, uh, tonight we've each got a buzzer. I'm going to ask some questions. If you know the answer, hit the buzzers and uh, make sure they're working. So uh, let's see if we've paid the electricity bill this week. Uh, test your buzzer. Cool. 
All right, not very loud at all. So you're going to hit your buzzers and yell your name at the same time. <laughs> now, uh, just let's test it now. So you're going to hit your buzzer and yell your name at the same time. Diana. Good, all right. Oh, it's Diana. It is Diana, oh, yeah. is it? Or Diane? You can come wherever you like, babe. Uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good night, Tom. How are you doing, that? Yeah. Uh, test your buzzer, Tom. Tom. I was quite, kind of like delayed oh, there. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Can I try again? No, that's, that's all right. We'll move on. Now, our first game that we're going to play today is called Horse or House. Oh. <laughs> so I'm going to read out a name, and you have mm -hmm. to tell me whether the name that I'm reading out is a Melbourne Cup horse or whether the name I read out is a former housemate of Big Brother. Mm. All right. <laughs> All right. I think, the, I think Big Brother had a few horses in it too, didn't they? Mm. All right. Well, actually, I just sort my profile out. The glass houses. All right. Never mind. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Ready. Cool. All right. Here we go. Question number one. Merlin, is he a housemate in the fourth season of Australian Big Brother or the winning horse of the 1974 Melbourne... Oh! Tom. Tom! Big house, uh, Big Brother, but wasn't he also in season two? Am I going above and beyond? There? Oh, let's have a look. We'll go with Big Brother. Is it... Ha oh. Yes! Oh, it's wow. Big Brother Free, the refugees. Do you all remember that infamous, infamous yeah. moment? Yeah. Yes, big TV. All right, here we go. Next question. Uh, Delta, is she a housemate in the first season of Australian Big Brother or the winning horse at the 1951 Melbourne Cup? Tom. Sorry. Tom. Right. Tom. Uh, uh, horse. Definitely a horse. Correct. Uh, it is a horse. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so let's just test your buzzer, make sure it's working. Diane. Good. All right. He works. Diane. <laughs> a little bit quicker because it's a bit of a competition here going yeah. on. All right, Wotan. Uh, is, she, uh, is he a housemate in the seventh season of Australian Big Brother or the winning horse of the 1936 Melbourne Cup? Diane. Diane. It's a horse. Correct. It's a horse. <laughs> All right. So on question number three, we've got Tom on two, Diane on one. So the game is still anybody's. All right. Question number four. Vesna. Is she a, a third place finisher of the fifth season of Australian Big Brother? Brother, or the winning horse of the 1996 Melbourne Cup? Tom. Tom, you, you yelled horse. your name first. Oh. Definitely a horse. Ah, oh, correct. correct. It's a horse. Oh, no. It's a It's moving on. Next question. Finally. So that's a point for, uh, for Tom there. Uh, let's go. Hot Dogs. Is he a contestant in the fifth season of Australian Tom. Big Brother? Oh, yes, Tom. Definitely Big Brother. Correct. Big Brother there is. Uh, <laughs> that's Hot Dogs. And coincidentally, Hot Dogs are often full of horse as well. So there you go. Now, our last round is a pressure cooker round. We're going to have mm. some stressful music on. Okay. And you have to answer the questions. I'm going to read out three things. And the first to tell me what those three things have in common is our winner. Mm. Are you ready? Okay. All right, let's begin. Here we go. Throw oriental bearskin. Diane, is it a food? No. <laughs> They're all rugs. Oh. Throw rug, oriental rug, I and bearskin rug. <laughs> all right, next one. Bishop knight pawn. Tom, Tom. chess. Chess. All chess, chess correct. So you got excited about the I pawn. I did. Part I really did. Particularly. <laughs> so I get excited about pawn as well. Uh, Panama Fez baseball. Oh! We are out of time. Oh. Coming in on four points, number one is Tom! <laughs> Which means Tom is the winner of our $50 prize voucher for Corgi Chicken and the Cheesecake Man. Let's have a big round of applause for our contestants! <laughs> All right, now, I've got some new corduroy pillows on the weekend. They're going to make headlines. Get it? Corduroy headlines? Uh, never mind. Uh, one thing that made season one of Live from St Kilda the success that it was, was having the best variety entertainment. All the acts we have are wonderful, and we know they're making headlines around the world. So we've called this part of the show the Corduroy Club. Tonight in the Corduroy Club, we have one of the three performers that are part of the Mary Tobin Presents show, the best of the Edinburgh Fest. This UK performer has performed all around the world, and thanks to Rona, has been in Australia a little longer than expected. But that means we are lucky enough to have him here tonight. Please put your hands together for Luke Benson! <laughs> Oh, yeah! Uh, how are we doing? Is everyone all right? 
Beautiful, beautiful. Lovely to be here. Right, I'll just go out of the way before we kick on properly. I'm quite a big bloke. Right, I'm uh, six foot seven, it's about two metres tall. So during the age of COVID, I knew that I had to be a me away from me at all times. <laughs> it's good height, right, do you know what I mean? Six foot seven, seven foot three wingspan. There's only really two things I could be with these dimensions. One is an NBA swingman, the other is a desert scavenger bird. <laughs> other thing that I would accept is those inflatable things you see at used car showrooms. <laughs> Quite an odd looking bloke. Right, quite an odd looking bloke. I feel like I've got the sort of head of a 12 year old on top of something that should be defending a village. <laughs> I'm doing Invisalign at the minute, right? I'm 37. Like, no one my age and my dimension should have metal in their mouth unless their primary job is fighting James Bond. <laughs> it's good, right? I've just been staying in an Airbnb. I've never stayed somewhere with so much natural light. Like, I've never had to put sunscreen on before going to bed. Slip, slap, slap, sleep. That's the adage in the house. Left some uh, eggs on the kitchen counter, came back and they'd hatched. It's, it's quite exciting, right? I'm from Newcastle, that's what this accent is in the UK, right? I'm aware it's like, it's quite a strong accent, but I need you to know that this is me working really hard to speak clearly. <laughs> this is me genuinely operating in second gear. Because I go back home to my little backwater village where I'm from, and they all look at me and go, Who's he trying to be with all these fancy spaces between his words? <laughs> well, I really am. Right, I live in a lovely part of Melbourne called Box Hill. Fantastic area, right? Very sort of Asian area, right? I play basketball there. It's fair to say that someone has a little bit of a height advantage. <laughs> but I really feel for these lads from Thailand and the Philippines who are playing basketball with me, essentially speaking their fourth or fifth language. So I play basketball with them like I'm an officer in a World War II film. Just sort of running about going, pass me the ball, I'm over here, keep a stiff up a little old chap, let's go get those bloody jerrys. <laughs> it's good, right, and we all sort of had a brush with Covid over here, right, Joe, you know I mean, it's quite rough, 113 day lockdown in Melbourne, right, I feel like a lot of people went in to that first lockdown like it was a second New Year's Day. <laughs> Everyone went into it with an attitude of, I can and I will, and then after three weeks everybody went, I will eat from a can. Did a lot of things to people, you had to develop new pastimes and way to get through it all, right? One of the things that I did was I got into cocktail making. Oh yeah. So what I very cleverly did was, I turned my drinking problem into a developmental pursuit. <laughs> did that, did a bit of cooking. Did a bit of cooking, that was fun. Did a bit of woodwork. It's a wonderful phrase in woodwork called glue and screw. But apparently women like dinner in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a rich history of uh, commerce, back and forth trade, haven't we? Like the uh, UK and Australia, you know, like in the 90s, you uh, gave us Ian Thorpe. Then more recently, you gave us Chris Hemsworth and Rolf Harris. So, you know, you gave us the Thorpedo, then you gave us Thor and a Pedo. <laughs> it's quite exciting, right? I had my uh, booster before I came out here, right? Beautiful thing to do, right? Had my booster, I had this brilliant fanboyant bloke do me booster, he just likes to flirt with me throughout. He opens our interaction by going, I'm gonna be penetrating you today. <laughs> so you buy a guy a drink first, you cheeky minx. He's got all of my information in front of him, right? Still quizzes me on it. How old are you? I'm 37. I wouldn't have you have a 27. You haven't had me yet, you dirty bitch. <laughs> and then right before the magic moment, he leans in and goes, you're about to feel a small prick. I went, I'll be the judge of that, thank you very much. <laughs> and that's how I met Ben. So, <laughs> thank you very much. Cheers, good night. No offense, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm sorry, I think I did put the, uh, the booster shot in a little bit hard. I apologise for that. And you still haven't called. Uh, Luke Benson, you can catch Luke at the best of the Edinburgh edition, playing at the Capitol Theatre throughout the festival, and follow his social at Massive Benson. That's at Massive Benson. We'll be back with Simon Polaramas and Tony Goldsmith after the break. <laughs> Thank you 
so much. Uh, well, my team and I get really, really bored throughout the week. So for fun and games, we try and make each other laugh. We take exciting names, titles and things like that and try and find ones that suit a theme. So what we've done is we have a theme and then we tie that theme to a category, like songs, TV shows, etc. So what we end up with is hopefully an amusing little play on the category in a game that we like to call... This is Ben's Mildly That's right. Ben's Mildly Bentertainment uh, list. So we're going to find out. <laughs> it probably is just pretty mildly entertaining. We're going to see how we go. And tonight's theme is... Signs You Are a University Student TV Shows Edition. So what we've done is we've taken TV shows and slightly adjusted their titles so it's Signs of University Students. Are you ready? Yeah! All right. Strap yourselves in because someone actually wrote these. All right. Here we go. Coming in at number eight is... Malcolm in the middle of a panic attack. Yes, that's number eight. So there's seven more to go. Coming in at number seven, we have... Full share house. <laughs> yeah, there's a play on full house there. Good. All right, coming in uh, number six, we have the incredible, the bachelor's degree. <laughs> and instead of roses, they give out debt. You get debt. You get debt. You get debt. Very exciting stuff. Uh, and coming in at number five, <laughs> survivor uppers versus downers. <laughs> it's kind of like working on this TV show. <laughs> a few uppers and downers backstage. Uh, coming in at number four. The amazing race to finish this assignment on time. Uh, I wish I could relate to that, but clearly I am not educated. <laughs> All right, and coming in at number three, the Goonmore Girls. Instead of the Gilmore Girls, because they're alcoholics and students, and you get it, you know what's going on. Coming in at number two, we've got Mr. Beans on toast for dinner again. <laughs> And coming in at number one, the one that we, uh, the crew and I, all felt was the funniest is... Everybody Loves Ramen! <laughs> yes, a bit of a play <laughs> Oh, Everybody Loves Ramen. <laughs> now, uh, Spanish-Australian Simon Palomares has been part of Australian comedy for three decades. As one of the creators of the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, he's appeared on hit shows like Wogs Out of Work and has appeared in television series such as Acropolis Now, The Games, Romper Stomper, Neighbours and Australian Gangster. Pow, pow. <laughs> He has performed at the prestigious Montreal Comedy Festival and recently became an award-winning film director with the documentary Latigo about Cuban comedians. He also performs all over the world in both English and Spanish. It brings me a great joy to please welcome to the stage, Simon Palomares! <laughs> Yes, I do work in Spanish. It's a little, all, all, you know, a little old uh, Spanish uh, love song. Como le gusta la gasolina? Yeah, you know that song. Uh, it's a song. Uh, it means uh, my girlfriend loves petrol, <laughs> which at, at the moment is not a cheap date. Okay, let's let's face that. Uh, how are you guys? Good, yeah. So we we are coming out of these two years, going back into the thing. Has, did life change for you guys a bit? Yeah. Okay, um, that did life change for me? Let's see, I used to get flown around the world from cruise, luxury cruise ship to luxury cruise ship from every single country you can imagine to the point that in 2019, in the summer, you, in the Mediterranean summer of 2019, I actually opened up my window one day and went, oh shit, not Venice again, please, <laughs> right? That's where life was at, okay, right? Down to now opening the window and going, oh, Northcote, here you are again, great. Uh, anybody from Northcote here, yeah? Yeah, look, we've got the Northcote people, beautiful. It's such a great little suburb. It's got a mixture of like young hipsters and all wogs all put into one place together. And the hipsters call the all wogs all wogs and the all wogs call everybody else in the suburb um, tenants, tenants, that's it, right? <laughs> Uh, and uh, but so much, so much happened. And just, uh, that, the, this two years of, of craziness. He said, "You know, in in in, in ten years from now, somebody's going to be doing a, a, a trivia show, right? And they're going to say, well, what's your 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 subject of expertise?' They're going to say history, COVID history, but not the whole COVID history. Just like the first three months, right? Um, it'll be from uh, sourdough bread all the way to Tiger King. Just those first three months, okay?" 
If I win, I'll come back and I'll do from Bass Cheesecake all the way to that bloody documentary about the octopus that we all cried about. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> He'd lost his arm and we couldn't even remember that he was going to grow it back anyway. Anyway, uh, it was... Uh, uh, and it's amazing because Melbourne people, I mean... We need, we deserve like, like a Nobel Prize for a peace, at least, for not killing each other. Six, we are the only people who can actually count our lockdowns. Six lockdowns, right? Everybody, everybody had a lockdown, but no, we had six lockdowns. First, three in the first year, um, then we had lockdown four, then lockdown five, where we just wanted to kill ourselves. Lockdown six, where we wanted to kill somebody else, right? And then we came out of it and celebrated with an earthquake. Anyway, so... Um, <laughs> And, uh, and, and then you, you, go, you go to other cities in Australia, they don't even know what we're talking about. It's like, it's like you know, it's like, you, you, I went to Adelaide, right, for the, for the festival last year. And uh, as soon as I get there, somebody goes, oh, yeah, 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 oh, whew. we had a lockdown here, yeah, the other day. <laughs> the other day, we had a lockdown here, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, they had, let me get this right, in Adelaide, they had an, a lockdown for five days in Adelaide. Five days. They found the guy with COVID and cut it back to three. You need six days to make a decent sourdough, right? Okay. And they, oh yeah, but we've got the best contact tracing. Dude, it's Adelaide. You all know each other. You know, you stand in the middle of, of Randall Moore going, who's been with Phil for the last three days? Oh, Charlene, get tested. That's it, done, we're done now. Back to normal. Uh, and of course, you know, Queensland wasn't even touched because the virus uh, virus uh, actually needs a viable culture. So uh, the, the thing is, oh, 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 yeah, oh, look at you Melbourne people laughing at that. Oh, yes, that's why we were hit so badly. Um, the, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just, we, we, we went nuts. We, I, don't know, I don't know at what point uh, it hit you the hardest, but I know that, that I really flipped. I really flipped. And, and thank God that we've got that, you know, we've got that wonderful uh, thing called uh, Are You OK? It's a great you know, yeah. uh, one day of the year where you can go up to people who've got, you know, panic attacks and anxiety and PTSD and go, hey, buddy, hey, you okay? Are you okay? And then if you say, no, I'm going to kill myself, you go, oh, okay, get some professional help. <laughs> oh, I don't know what else to do after that. Um, and uh, and it's, well, I think we need one more day. I think we need one more day to deal with another whole bunch of mental issues like um, narcissism and uh, uh, sociopaths and psychopaths, you know. Uh, we need a are you bloody kidding me day, right? <laughs> you know, especially at work, so everybody at work has, has thought of somebody already, right? Um, the, uh, the other thing is, uh, in, in Northcote, where, where I live, uh, um, I've got this, the most, I mean, you know, it's, it's Northcote. It's got, it's got like the, the, the biggest uh, organic uh, uh, supermarket in, in, in the city. So, yeah, you know it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, Terra Madre. Okay, so I'm going to Terra Madre, and I've got a friend that I haven't seen in about 30 years coming out of the place, okay, with, you know, his box of, his box of you know, $10 ugly celery. Anyway, um, and, uh, and this guy I haven't seen for about 10 years. He used to be a drummer out of work. Now he's still a drummer out of work 30 years later. And, and you know, he's, um, he looks like the, the, the bus driver from The Simpsons, right? Okay, oh, Simon, how, how you doing, man? Oh, my, how you doing, right? And uh, the first thing he says to me, he says, he says um, uh, so you, you, you've been vaccinated? And I went, yeah, of course I've been vaccinated. I mean, my life has changed so much, right, that vaccine was the last, the, the least of my, of my problems, really. I went, to, I went to, uh, to the exhibition buildings, I said, I had them all in one day, that's it. I came out looking like a pin cushion, right? Um, it was like, you know, mask running. Don't, don't, don't start with me on that, honestly. And, and he goes, oh, yeah, and, and were, you happy? were you happy with the ingredients? <laughs> I'm going, dude, you have never had a drug that came with ingredients. You have never had a drug that didn't come out of some bikey's garage in Broadmeadows, but now your body is a temple, right? And, you know, and he said, oh, man, it's just like, I know that we disagree on this, but you should be careful because, you know, you could be losing friends. And I'm thinking, let me do the maths here. Let me do the maths. If I never talk to an anti-vaxxer again in my life, mathematically, I still have 95% of the population to be friends with. Right? Okay. That means I can actually afford to piss off more people 
because I haven't got the time to be friend with 95% of the population. I don't, right? Okay, so I've started making a list. If you put, if you put ice in your glass of red wine, you're dead to me. Get out of here, right? That's it. You're dead to me. I'm not, yeah, I can actually, you can actually get rid of nationalities, right? right? I, I'm not going to tell you which one. You think of the one, it's in your head, right? Okay, but if you clap when the aeroplane lands, Get out of my life right now. <laughs> Have a great night. Take it easy. Ciao. Simon Palomares, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Simon. It's Simon. Simon. Now, we've, we've known each other for, what, 15 years? And I, I'm yeah. still struggling to say your name properly. Right. Palomares? Palomares. 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 Oh, well, you can follow uh, Simon online if you go to at Simon Palomares. That's at Simon Palomares. And you can catch his brand new show, Bring It On, playing at the Belgian Beer Cafe throughout the festival. <laughs> Uh, you may have heard we do have a live studio and we film every Tuesday at the Alex Theatre in St Kilda. We keep it small, so book early at www.livefromsecure.com. Next week, we've got international headlining comedian Stephen K. Amos here in studio. Yeah! Uh, we've got performance from two comedians and music from the band Claim, all that and more. So be sure to book and come in and join in the fun. Now, here at hashtag Live from St Kilda, we love supporting Melbourne businesses and attractions. So for season two, we wanted a segment of the show to showcase some of the incredible attractions, sights and sounds. So if like me, after two years of lockdowns, you're desperate to get out and about and try something new, but then can't think what to do, this is the part of the show for you. It's called We're Gonna. Less than a two hour drive away from the heart of Melbourne, you're at the gateway to one of the most amazing experiences around, where the sand meets the sea and the sea opens to a world of amazing marine life. For 25 years, Sea Old Dolphin Swims have been taking everyday people and giving them the experience of a lifetime. And that's why we're in beautiful Queenscliff, where today we're going to jump on a boat, set sail and swim with wild dolphins and seals. But first, I need a coffee. Operating all year round, it's always the perfect time to head out. And don't worry about the weather, the dolphins and seals don't. And you're supplied with a thick wetsuit to keep you warm and buoyant any time of year. Once everyone is checked in and suited up, it's time to set sail. So Mitch, you're one of the skippers for Sea or Dolphin Swims. Uh, and I heard that in 2019, the owner Merv created something called SOL. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so SOL stands for Southern Ocean Environmental Link. And he created that to help protect the health of our oceans. So we run um, different conservation projects and workshops, one of them being a plastic recycling work workshop. So people can bring in plastic bottle tops and we recycle them and mould them into different uh, little items, um, like keychains, um, oh, wax wow. combs, things like that. So not only do you take people out to experience the wildlife, you uh, also do your bit to protect them as well. Absolutely. We try and um, put as much effort into conserving uh, the environment as well as, um, I guess, operating as well. And uh, part of our ticket uh, purchase goes towards protecting the animals as well. It does. So part of your ticket uh, is an environmental levy. So it helps fund different projects, science projects and conservation projects um, that I guess are run around Port Phillip and the surrounding areas to help um, keep the health of our oceans healthy, I guess. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> the three and a half hour day tours generally start with a snorkel at Pope's Eye. Its shallow and protected waters are teeming with colourful fish and marine life, making it the ideal place to brush up on our snorkelling skills. Well, now that we've done the training, it's time to jump in and swim with the dolphins. So let's get our snorkels on. <laughs> There's a dolphin right under me. It's truly amazing. It's, a, it's really hard to tell them apart. Yeah, the dolphins, they're really... Oh, no, no, the, the twins. Oh. Alrighty, guys, so welcome to Chinaman's Hat. This is the home of the Australian fur seals. It's a haul out site for these seals. They're all males. They're pretty much the rejects of the breeding colonies. Uh, it's pretty much a bachelor pad, and they hang out together, and they come and swim with us. <laughs> are, there, um, are there any sharks? No. No? Too shallow for the sharks here.
part of this incredible tour is that light snacks and refreshments are also provided. Welcome back on board. You guys must be hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And once our food is settled, we get to get back in the water to have a bit more fun. Sea Orb Dolphin swims operate daily. Be sure to check them out, but for the moment, when you're just relaxing and having a bit of a spa, how nice is this? Well, sadly, that brings us to our trip with Sea Old Dolphin Swims. And uh, I'm super sad to go, and I think these guys are pretty sad too. They're even giving us a wave goodbye. <laughs> See you guys. Sea Old Dolphin Tours run all year round and provide the best experience with the most amazing marine life. To book your tour, head to their website, dolphinswims.com.au, and follow their socials at Dolphin Swims. This is Chit Chat. My Chit Chat guest tonight is one of Australia's most beloved entertainers. From her sellout shows as lead vocalist of the Shantuzis to acting roles in Neighbours, Prisoner, Underbelly and more. To being the host of the sexual health program Sex Life in the 1990s to winning over our hearts in the most recent series of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. She's now spreading the love and joy as a marriage celebrant, continuing her streak of melting hearts. It is with much delight I get to say, please welcome to the stage, Totty Goldsmith! <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, please. Tony Goldsmith, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that, a standing ovation from there. Everyone's exhausted from that long list of credits that you've got. Ah, that's nothing. It's, it just doesn't stop with you. You do uh, like absolutely everything. It's it's incredible. I like to keep myself stimulated and interested. I do. I do everything. Yeah, there's nothing that you, you don't give your hand out. And we're going to talk about some of the things that you've been trying recently. Yes. Uh, but first, I just want to say thank you so much uh, for being here. It's very exciting. And before we go anywhere, I, I can't... You played Margot Robbie's mother in Neighbours. Uh, you guys have heard of Margot Robbie? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, um, how are you feeling about Neighbours finishing? I think it's... I think it, look, it's really sad, but I guess everything has its time. It's just... It's such a, a beautiful institution and all yeah. the crew and all the cast it's going to be really sad to see it go but it's had a really long life how many years has it's, it been it must it's be like 30 or, or something, something like that it's been amazing it's crazy i was yeah. um i was on neighbors about 12 13 years ago Were you? Uh, yeah and uh, my character brad dawson was uh, a kindergarten teacher i was yeah. studying to be a kindergarten teacher but yeah. he was selling drugs on the side to play for the tuition <laughs> oh, so uh, yes yeah, some of the storylines of neighbors over the years have been quite interesting but you had a, a fantastic one there you are on a set yeah, there i am uh, do you think you, are you going to watch the last episode and have a, a bit of a tear? Uh, look, who's? I think we all have to watch it. But it's just, yeah, it's such a great institution, Neighbours. It's, yeah, it's going to be really <laughs> sad. I felt really honoured to be on it. I sort of, all of the shows that I've been part of in Australia, I feel like it's just so good to have been part of these iconic yeah. um, shows and Neighbours is certainly one of them. And to work with Margot, I mean, it n did not surprise me when she took off. You sort of you get that feeling, do you, when you meet someone? She was just so, she was so good and so beautiful and so much fun and so Aussie and so um, easy to be with and easy to work with and, and she had such big dreams and so, she, and she just allowed it. She wasn't like, I've got to be famous. She was just exuberant and excited about life and so when she took off it was like, yeah, of course. So I imagine then you would have seen a, a little bit of yourself in, in Margot, because you're Well, she is my like daughter. Her. Well, I mean. she is <laughs> certainly on camera, and um, you, you do exude this confidence. Uh, and uh, we can't go past talking about a show, and I know it was quite a while ago now, what? but uh, Sex Life uh, was a huge show in the 1990s, and you were one of the 50 sexiest people in the world. <laughs> yeah. Whoever chooses this, who judges sexy people? <laughs> Come on, I mean. Just a, a bunch of creepy old men somewhere in the corridor going, yeah. oh, yes, this will do. <laughs> do you think a show like Sex Life um, could be, with, with social media and uh, some of the 
negative commentary that women in media face. Do you think a show like that could be made now? Oh, I think it would be so important now. Yeah. I think it was way ahead of its time. And I think now, because when we did it, it was 25 years ago, there was one dating site, Match.com, and now there's like 15,000. Yeah. Did someone remember that? Yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> and just it was, online sitting there tapping away. so much. We talk more about our sexuality. We talk everyone's, you know, gender fluidity and openness. It would be a much better show now. I reckon. Do you, would you be up for hosting a show like that, do you think? 100%. Oh, who'd love to see Sex Life return? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with more of Tony Goldsmith after these messages. <laughs> Welcome back to Live from Secunda. I'm joined with the incredibly talented Tony Goldsmith. <laughs> Tony Goldsmith, does the amount of love that you get ever, do you ever get used to being adored by absolutely everyone? Aww, it's very nice. It's really warm in here. It's beautiful. Thanks, guys. It's do you very think, nice. Did you get Tell extra me. warmth uh, yes. after I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here? Because people, like, they've known you for years and years, yeah. but you were quite open in that show. Yeah, well, I am. I mean, why not? But it... it it is that kind of environment where you don't get a whole lot of sleep and you're starved and you're talking to people and you get triggered by something they say. So, yeah, it was pretty, you're pretty open. Did, did you forget about the cameras or by, by the stage that you, you opened up and it was all in the media and that, were you not caring too much and you were just happy to get it off your chest? You mean the drug thing? The, yeah. Yeah. No, that was good, actually. That was good talking about it. I didn't plan it, but I was yeah. triggered by something that Davina said and it came out. And it's sort of like, yeah, no, I think it's really good that I finally talked about it. But <laughs> read the cameras. I totally forgot cameras were there. There was like, I don't know, like 500 cameras. And in, uh, there's so many. But uh, sometimes you'd be walking down a path and you'd hit zzzz. Oh, you know, <laughs> a little bit of a following footstep yeah, 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 going on. Yeah, but you forget it. because you're in this jungle and they hide them pretty well. And, yeah. But every so often you'd, you'd, you'd hear somebody cough from behind a wall or sneeze or something. Go, oh, so it's right. not like this set. They're, they're actually hidden behind walls and you can't... Oh, totally hidden. You oh. can't see them. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, like you're living in, in a, this beautiful... Well, it's actually a rainforest. Yeah. But it's beautiful and they're all behind this massive rock wall doing their thing and then suddenly you just catch a light with the camera moving. You're like, what's going on there? Yeah. I personally, um, ah, that sound what's means that? it's time to play a this or that. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to put 60 seconds I love on the game. clock. Yes. Uh, you're going to have to answer as many questions as you can within 60 questions. Uh, six minutes. Seconds. Uh, six, you made me all nervous again. Yeah. Uh, each question only has two answers to choose from and you must choose one. Uh, Toddy Goldsmith, are you ready? I'm ready, baby. All right, your time starts now. I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. As fake as my teeth or as real as muck? As real as muck. Okay, all right, yep. cool. Summer or winter? Winter. Facebook or Twitter? Facebook. Uh, who's nicer, Dr. Chris Brown or Julia Morris? Oh. Nicer? Julia. <laughs> right. I, don't know. I just pineapple belong on pizza. No. Okay, you've got to get out right now. Oh, I disagree. <laughs> uh, St Kilda or King's Cross? St Kilda. All right, uh, a cup of tea or a glass of wine? Glass of wine. Of course, especially with my company. The more you drink, the more tolerable I am. Uh, <laughs> singing solo or singing as part of a group? Part of a group. Uh, who are bigger bridezillas? Brides or gay men? Gay men. Gay men. <laughs> uh, have you ever married a couple and thought, well, this just isn't going to last? Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, early mornings or late nights? Early mornings. And finally, should everyone looking to get married or uh, follow your beautiful, positive, inspiring uh, Insta story, jump on the socials and follow you at Toddy underscore Goldsmith. What? What the hell no, was that? No, I ended up getting I'm married in social media. I just, yeah, you I'll, lost me. All right, the, the last ladder. question. <laughs> and finally, should everyone looking to get married or those who just love everything that you're about, uh, give you a like and follow you on the socials at Toddy underscore Goldsmith. <laughs> it's... Okay. I, I'm giving you, uh, Tony's really, really sweet. I, she was I like, just, I just owned out. I didn't, I it's, didn't. You, I get that look get all the time. Usually from my partner, just like... <laughs> they just zone out, just switched off. Uh, that was just a plug for people to check out Thank your you. socials. You can yes. follow uh, Tony Goldsmith on the socials at Tony underscore Goldsmith. <laughs> That's at Tony underscore Goldsmith. Tony Goldsmith, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
We met him at the start of the show. He is now here to share with us Mason Hall's new smash hit, Montro. Please put your hands together for one half of the group, Mason Hall. It's Joe Kadeem. <laughs> Sit yourself down, enjoy the sequel To a diary reading that bruised my ego If this ain't the cure It's a fair placebo But yes, I'm counting my beans And I'll be counting out chickens But I'm still keeping my day job Yeah, I'm on the clock Deleton ain't much of a ton When I finally mustered up the courage I was playing on Ben Murphy's show I've burnt all of my effigies Smoke inhalation brought me to my knees And I traded old ailments for a new disease And now I need a cure Oh, I need it So Uh, follow them at mason.hall. That's at mason.hall. Uh, be sure to book your tickets for the next recording next Tuesday. Uh, we'll be back next week with comedy from John Robles, James Leona, music from Claim, and celebrity guest, the amazing international comedian Stephen K. Amos, joining me on the Chit Chat Couch. Until then, look after yourselves and one another. I'm Ben Murphy. Bye-bye for now. Woo!